two weeks, U.S. President Barack Obama will make his first trip to, uh, as president to Kenya, uh, the country of his father's birth. Uh, this will also be the first ever visit by a sitting U.S. president to the East African nation. The president will hold uh, bilateral meetings and attend the 2015 Global Entrepreneurship Summit in Nairobi. It will be Obama's fourth trip to Kenya. He visited as a U.S. senator in 2006 and made a trip with his then fiance uh, Michelle in 1992. Obama's father, Barack Hussein Obama Sr., was born in Western Kenya. Now, so what, what is uh, the significance of Obama's visit to Kenya? Uh, for that, I'm joined by Kenya's ambassador to the United States, Robinson Kidai. Ambassador, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much, Vincent. So if we may begin <coughs> right there, uh, what is the significance of this trip to oh, Kenyans? Oh, it's uh, very significant. Uh, first, uh, for the reason why he is coming to visit Kenya uh, to attend uh, the uh, entrepreneurship, uh, Global Entrepreneurship Summit, which is being co-hosted by Kenya and U.S. government. And uh, this is a very important program that tries to encourage the youth uh, to come up with the good business ideas that that can be translated into business. The future of Africa is with our youth. We need uh, to make it possible for them to start businesses so they become employers uh, rather than looking for uh, blue collar or white collar jobs then they can be able to set up uh, businesses if they do that then obviously they are going to create employment and which we have uh, is, is quite substantial in Africa and uh, even more then they'll be able to uplift their fellow youth from poverty so this is a very very important uh, uh, global uh, summit and we are grateful to President Obama uh, is the one who came up uh, with this idea. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, Kenyans uh, are ready to receive uh, President Obama. We have made all the necessary arrangements mm -hmm. and I'm sure they will be up to his liking. Uh, it's a historic visit in the sense that uh, this is the first sitting uh, US president to visit Kenya. Uh, the president, the former presidents who have visited Kenya, have visited Kenya after retirement. Mm -hmm. But this is now, the first sitting president. It, it, there was a time that uh, many Kenyans really worried uh, that uh, President Obama might finish his term, a second term actually, before fi uh, visiting Kenya because of so many other issues. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who are looking into kind of trying to read in between the lines, mm -hmm. what changed? Uh, what might have changed that made it possible for the president to, uh, to come to Kenya? Really, uh, as far as we are concerned, there has been no change. He expressed his desire to visit Kenya, uh, immediately he was sworn in as president, uh, subject to scheduling, and uh, this is the right time, uh, actually. Uh, for us, really, nothing has changed. He has expressed that wish a long time ago to come, and uh, Kenyans have been expecting him. You know, you know, in addition to historic ties between Kenya and the U.S., there's also the personal element. Uh, if we recall, one of our freedom fighters, uh, the late Tom Boyer, in conjunction with the former president, John F. Kennedy, they're the ones who came up with this student airlift to prepare leaders, uh, Kenyan leaders, who would then be able to take over positions of leadership after independence. Now, one of the stu those students who came to U.S. Uh, is, and, uh, was President uh, Barack Obama's father. Mm -hmm. So we also have that uh, connection. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, I think for him, uh, is both historic and also personal. Yes. Now, you know, recently there was a very significant ruling here in the United States at the Supreme Court uh, regarding uh, uh, legalization of uh, uh, gay marriage in this country. And it so happened that uh, uh, because it's around the time the president is about to go to Kenya, there's been a lot of excitement around the country. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And the and, uh, question is, is the government concerned that perhaps this might uh, cause things that uh, can result into some form of embarrassment or anything? No, no, there's really no reason to be concerned. Uh, that's, that's the position in the US, the position in Kenya is uh, different. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled uh, that uh, gay, gay marriages are legal. Uh, our constitution uh, still does not allow it. Uh, but again, uh, these are two presidents. Mm -hmm. You can't prevent a president from raising issues that are of concern to him or to, the, or to, his, uh, to his country. 
So really, for, for, for us, uh, it really is, a, it is a non issue. Yeah. Because there are those who say we want the president to talk about that when it comes to Kenya, but then Kenyan politicians are saying no, 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 uh, no, don't don't bring this kind of conversation here. So they will go, you know, there are those issues. Then people wonder how the government is taking this. Uh, as I said, um, you can't prevent a, a president from raising issues. Yeah. Uh, so, he, so 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 we can't prevent him. Uh, but for for us, what I'm just saying is that our constitution. Uh, prohibits it, yeah. and uh, for us, it really is a non-issue. Mm -hmm. I think there are more um, uh, bigger subjects to talk about rather than uh, that one. Uh, we, as I said, really this summit yeah. is targeting the youth to assist them to be able to come up with good business ideas that can be turned into businesses that can grow into these large corporations. Mm -hmm. You recall that um, most of the big uh, American companies, some of them started actually in garages, you know, and even more, uh, we have uh, a number of our universities who have set up in incubation centers you know, where they can monitor, uh, they can uh, train yeah. and uh, assist these young guys uh, to turn their business ideas into into, into business. Yeah. Now, Ambassador, uh, one of the other things that has been of great concern to Kenyans and people abroad, some who may want to invest, is uh, security. You know, Al Shabaab just the other day uh, again struck uh, northeastern Kenya. Uh, what is happening to kind of reassure people who may want to come in, people in the country that actually uh, the country is a safe place to visit, to be, uh, to be in, and to invest in? Kenya is safe. Let me assure uh, all the people who are planning to visit Kenya, Kenya is safe. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a few uh, challenges on security, particularly on our, uh, with our neighbor, Somalia. You know what they say, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your neighbor. And government has taken uh, adequate measures to protect all the visitors who come to Kenya. Uh, not only the visitors, even the Kenyans who are there. Uh, there have been uh, new changes in personnel in the security ministries. Uh, in this year's budget, a lot of resources have been directed towards the police uh, to give them good equipment, good communication uh, uh, equipment, uh, in, uh, good housing to increase their morale. Uh, so really everything has been uh, taken care of. And what we are saying is that terrorism is a global Problem. It's not a Kenyan yeah. problem. Now, we know that the president is going to hold uh, bilateral relations with the Kenyan leadership. Uh, but uh, at the moment, if you can just tell us a little bit, what, what is the nature of the kind of relationship uh, that is existing between the United States and Kenya? What are some of the specific areas in which Kenya really would like to see U.S. collaborate with it a bit more? Well, I've got um, the, the issues that I've always raised with the White House. I've raised them with the State Department. I've raised them with every senior U.S. official I meet. The first is the travel advisories against visiting Kenya. That has a very devastating effect on our tourism. Uh, because the moment U.S. issues this travel advisory, other countries follow. UK follows, then Germany will follow, and other European countries. We get the bulk of our tourists from Europe. So when they follow, it has very devastating effect. Our tourism has gone down by 30%. So we have been asking the US government at least to downgrade the travel advisories uh, and to, or to have specific areas rather than a general one. Uh, we, are also, we have also asked the US government to authorize our national airline, Kenya Airways, to have direct flights here in US. If that happens, it will uh, reduce travel time from the current 20, 23 hours to 12 hours or 13 hours. We'll be able to bring our famous flowers yeah. here in US. You know, Kenya produces the best rose flowers in the whole world, but unfortunately they are taken to Amsterdam for auctioning and they lose what we call country eligibility. Mm -hmm. So now, when those flowers come here, uh, they are no longer Kenyan, therefore the full duty is imposed. Mm -hmm. If we had uh, our national airline coming here, uh, then they'd be able to yeah. 
bring in the flowers. Mm -hmm. And even okay. more, uh, yeah. more American tourists would also be able to come. Okay, we did a research here and we found that... Uh, uh, well, we are kind of running out of time. Uh, so the, the other item you probably wanted to mention is, you, you, you mentioned uh, the flower, the airline, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the tri tri travel advisors. Is, yeah. I think that is key. Yes. Well, I want to thank you very much. We hopefully we'll have you back here and we talk a little more about Kenya. Thank you so much. Uh, and the thank you for having me. Enjoy there. Well, Ambassador Gidai uh, of uh, Kenya, the, the ambassador of Kenya to the United States. Thank you very much once again for joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, um, we want to know what you think now about Africa 54 and the stories we cover during the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Find me on Twitter at VOA Vince McCory.